Five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention. All districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters. <laughs> Firefighters, the true to life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the demon of fire. In just a minute, we'll join Tim Collins and Chief Cody in the office of the Senecomb Towboat Company near the dock from which Tim was diving when the young fireman made his exciting discovery, which caused Chief Cody to put in a special call for Detective Sergeant McGurk. But before we go on, there's just time for this message. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to the office of the Tenecomb Towboat Company, which the management has placed at the disposal of Chief Cody for his meeting with Detective Sergeant McGurk. On the floor of the office lies a soggy, mud-soaked bundle of cloth. And as Chief Cody points to it, he says, well, There's your evidence, Mac. That's the stuff we found in the river. In 15 feet of water. Yep. Hmm. How did you happen to run across it, Chief? Uh, diving practice. A couple of my boys from the rescue company were working out with a diving tackle. And Collins, that's the fellow we were teaching to dive, well, he stumbled across this bundle. Does it strike you? It's odd he knew right where to pick it up. Well, how do you mean? The whole bottom of the river to prowl around on and all kinds of junk lying around in the mud, the one thing he picks up and brings ashore is this. Well, how great this thing blazes, Mac. You're not trying to insinuate. Just insinuate. thinking out loud, Chief. Well, if you think my boy Collins had any idea this stuff was lying there underwater... I don't think anything yet, Chief. Right now, my job is to get the facts. When I get all the facts, they'll line themselves up fast enough. Well, if they line up so that they seem to point toward Collins or anyone else who was down on that dock today... All right, Chief, all right. Let's start over. Let's take a look at this bundle. All right. You see what it is, don't you? A jacket. Mm-hmm. Rolled up into a bundle with the sleeves tied to hold it secure. And inside... Now don't rush me, Chief. We're still examining the outside. Hmm? Well, what do you see besides mud from the river bottom? Well, I'll see more when we've had this jacket clean and the particles we clean out of it sorted to separate the mud from other dust and stuff that might have been ground into the fabric. Dust and stuff? Particles that may tell us where this jacket has been, like a schoolroom picking up chalk dust or a coal yard picking up coal dust and so on. Oh, oh, yeah, I see. And if you can get a line on the jacket's back history... Maybe we get a line on its owner. Something I can tell you right now. Huh? That's a nice piece of cloth, Chief Cody. A fine tweed, fairly new. Not the kind of jacket you'd throw in the river if you had a choice. Then whoever tossed it overboard was in a tight spot? Didn't have time to make a choice? That could be, Chief Cody. That well could be. Matter of fact... Huh? Yeah. Matter of fact, we may not have too much trouble tracing the owner of this jacket. You know already who it was? Not for sure. But a while back, we had a line on a fellow. A counterfeiter? Maybe. All we know is he was around when some queer money was passed. Oh, about a month ago, yes. I heard something about that. That's the case. I never heard how it turned out, Max. It hasn't turned out. Not yet. What happened? Well, this fellow we mentioned, we had a tail on him. From information received, we knew he was a runner. You know, a messenger. Mm -hmm. For the gang? For the gang. Mm -hmm. And we counted on having him lead us to the printing plant where these fellows were turning out their phony bills. Matter of fact, we knew he was carrying a new set of plates to the plant one night. And you tailed him? Until he shook us off. He lost you or you lost him for good? Or bad. Half an hour later, we picked him up and shook him down. No plates. Nothing to hold him on. Maybe he delivered those plates, Mac. We know he didn't. How do you know? From information received. Now, that's police business, Chief. No, he didn't deliver the plates at the printing plant. He stashed them somewhere. Then this find we made today. You haven't looked at the plates yet, Mac. They're mm. still in this bundle. I put them back as soon as I saw what they were. You know, maybe... Maybe. Let's look. All right. Here. They'll slide out if you shake the coat. Now, don't get that mud... <coughs> yeah. There they are. Plates for printing phony money. 
How about it, Mac? Well, well, well. Hello, Stanislav. Huh? These are the plates, all right, Chief. Sure as a fingerprint, you can tell what plate a piece of counterfeit money was printed from. And these are the ones that disappeared that night. Yeah, but now that you have them, how can they help your case? Well, finding them in this street coat helps us, Chief, because Stanislaus can't laugh off the fact that his coat and these plates were found in one and the same bundle. Well, you'll be able to prove ownership of the coat? Never fear. We'll prove it all right. And, Chief... Yeah? On this deal, the police department owes the fire department a citation. You've cracked this case for us. Now, you can pass the credit along to the rescue company, McGurk. Sure. Though for a minute there, I thought you were going to try to accuse one of my boys of being involved in this. <laughs> well, <laughs> just thinking out loud, Chief, that's all. Just wondering how your boys knew right where to go to pick up this hidden evidence. Well, I'll admit I'm glad the fire department is out of the picture. We know our business and you know yours, so... We'll leave the police work to you, Sergeant McGurk. Don't worry. We'll take care of Stanislaus and his pals. Stanislaus. That's the fellow's name, Mac, the runner for the gang? Stanislaus Mushnowski. A bad egg if there ever... Mushnowski? Yeah. Yeah, what's the matter, Chief? Great blazing blisters. Maybe the fire department isn't clear of this case after all. Huh? My man Collins picked up those plates from the bottom of the river. But the fellow who was pumping air for the diving helmet was Private Mushnowski. Yeah, and he's waiting outside with Collins right now. Astounded at Chief Cody's announcement, Detective Sergeant McGirt makes a quick decision. He bundles the mud-soaked jacket and the plates for printing counterfeit money into a sheet of wrapping paper and then announces. Chief, now this looks like a tie-up of some kind. I want to see those men of yours at police headquarters. Yes, but Mac, I know Mishnotsky. He's been in the department for years with never a black mark. Besides, come to think of it, huh? his name is Gabriel. That's why he never uses it. They call him Mush. Mush, huh? well, Yeah, but it's Gabriel Mushnowski. So there's no chance. Oh, of... I know your man and Stanislaus aren't one and the same, Chief. But there's some connection. There must be. Brothers, cousins, maybe. Because you'll have to admit it. You know yourself, Mushnowski isn't a common name. No, no, of course it isn't. Yeah. Well, I want those men at headquarters, Chief. Will you get them there? Well, all right, Mac. It's my duty, I guess. Thanks, Chief. I'll slip out the back way so I won't have to talk to them here. Maybe make them more watchful. Well, thanks for everything, Chief. Okay, Mac. Okay. Collins, I want you. Yes, sir. Coming, Chief. Mushnowski, too. Oh, uh, Mush isn't here, Chief. What? You mean to say he left without letting me know? Well, Chief, he had to take the diving gear back to rescue company quarters. Oh, then he's coming back here? Well, not unless you send for him, Chief. You see, he... Well, he, he didn't think you needed him. He, he said, uh... Well... Hmm? Well, what did he say, Collins? Well, after you left us on the dock, Chief, when you came ahead to bring those plates we found into the office here and uh, phone the police... Yes, yes, yes. I know what I did, Collins. I asked you, what did Mushnowski do or say? Well, he said he used to know people that shoved queer money back in the old days when he, when he worked for the carnival before he came on to the fire department. Oh, and... that does it. When McGurk hears about that... Sir? Never mind, never mind. Go on. Oh, well, he said, gee, he seemed kind of depressed and down in the mouth about it, but he said he doesn't want anything to do with this case. He doesn't want to get mixed up in it. Oh, worse and worse. Go on. What else? Well, nothing, sir, except, oh, yeah, he said, well, you know how he talks. He said, I'm going home, kid. Police business. That's one thing I never get mixed up in. Not for nothing. Yeah. Well, Collins, this is police business. And it looks as if we're all going to be mixed up in it. Now, Chief Cody is busy enough with the normal business of firefighting. But when two men of his rescue company, Privates Gabriel Mushnowski and young Tim Collins, are under suspicion, that's when Chief Cody must move as fast as if he were rolling to command the fight against the general alarm. For Chief Cody's own investigation of this exciting case, listen to our next true-to-life episode of The Firefighters.
In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message you ought to hear. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is Chief Cody. And here's a suggestion about how you can inspect your own homes for danger spots. The four places in the average house where fire is most apt to break out. First, look at the joints and walls around the furnace or other main heating units. Now see if they are far enough away or well enough insulated so that these joints and walls around the heating unit do not offer a chance for fire to start. Well, that's all for now, but I'll tell you three other danger spots soon. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's go! Let's go! Fire! Fire! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.